Hey everybody, can you guys hear me all right? Hi Mr. Dearborn, Bill, Frank, Cindy. Good deal, good deal. Yay! Oh, oh, and my, my camera moved. There we go. Hey, Matthew, Hoosier, Lincoln, John, how are you guys doing? Sometimes I think I put too much information. I don't know if I have enough time. <laughs> that and I don't feel like I'm organized enough. Not at all. Not at all. That's nickel. There's that. Hey, Ronnie Joe. So we'll give it a few minutes. Let some people trickle in here. I started a couple minutes early. So. Hey, Brian. Hi, Lucky. Hangings. It's 85. Hi, Anna, Dave, Flash, Jeff, Ken, what's up? How is everybody this lovely evening? So what did y'all think about Cheapskate's stream? I thought he did really, really good. And I was really, like, I totally missed the Hebrew part, I've done the Arabic part, and then after that, I was just lost. Well, Ken, there's usually a little thing above the stove. It's a vent. You turn it on. And it kind of sucks the smoke up when you're cooking. Well, thank you, Flash, for joining me and us, all of us. So... I think he did really good. Hi, Cheapskate. We were just talking about you. You did really good. Although, as soon as you hit on Japanese, it was like my brains just came out of my ear and I was lost. Well, thank you, David. I appreciate that. Hopefully, I will keep you entertained enough that you'll stay. So, domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. Domo. Oh, so much fun. So much fun. All right. What time is it? 9.01. We'll give it a few more minutes. A few more minutes. So, hi, Weasel, John. Smoking coins. Hello. So, just by a show of ones. How many people collect Canadian coins on any kind of level? If you find them, you just throw them in a box or you actually like get into them and really collect them. Hey, Riser. One, one, one. Twos would be a no. I didn't say that, but you know, or any other number. Binary does not count, Frank. <laughs> Just one, huh, Ken? Would that be one box full? I would say one box full. Maybe two. So. Alright, guys. Well, I don't have... I mean, I do. I have an hour. But we're going to get into this. So in the meantime, check this out. That cool I have to put a different picture on there but I found a website that does cool stuff like that I can't do that stuff 
So I am like totally excited. Check this one out. Yeah, these ones don't have any music on the OBS for some reason. And I don't know why. You can do just a intro with no music. So, it is what it is. No, I did not, Cindy. Did you post a video? Because if you did, I will definitely check it out. Shumar, hello, welcome. Shumar will be coming up. Jeff, he'll be coming up after me at 10 p.m. Um, and then tomorrow, there is a whole bunch of people starting at noon is oldies and goodies, rare coin TVs, manic, um, hoogies hobby shop, blues coins, trays, treasures, and ending with the big show. And then Monday evening will be the grand finale for the coin seminar weekend. And that is where uh, people who have donated some really nice coins, um, have, uh, have donated. So that'll be fun. I can't wait. Um, all right. So we're going to get into this. We are talking about Canadian coins, um, errors and varieties. So I've been trying to figure out exactly how to go about this. Um, and the best thing I can do without sounding like I'm trying to rip specific websites to shreds, um, which is not my intention because there is a wealth of very good information, um, but is to just kind of go through some of the errors and varieties that you can find. Obviously, there's videos out there and things like that, but um, some other things are not so easily accessible and not so easy to find. Um, so, things, well, let's start with what are varieties versus errors. So, varieties are going to be things that are um, a coin that differs from the basic design. And basically, these are things that happen before the coin is struck. So, it's on the die. Um, your DDOs, your double dies, um, your RPM, well... I don't know if RPMs really is considered a variety. I don't know. Ken, you might want to answer that one. Because it's repunched, so it's after the coin is pressed. Um, so I don't know. Um, small dates over large dates. Large dates over small dates. Uh, things of that nature are going to be your varieties. Now, varieties usually, and I say usually because some there are some where there are a lot of things. The 1972 um 1972D Lincoln Scent. There are a ton of double dies there, and they're minuscule, but there's a ton of them. Okay, it is on the die. Okay, I wasn't sure about the repunchment mark. So, our RPM would also be a variety. Um, errors, however, are not all of them command premiums. There are a few that do command premiums. And errors are things that are human or mechanical errors, and they happen after the fact. Um, would be the easiest way to explain that. Yeah, 1960D RPMs. There's, what, hundreds of them. There's so many. It's just insane. Um, so error types are going to be your cuds, your die cracks, your off-centers, your misaligned, your broad strikes, your machine doubling, your blank planchets, wrong planchets, multiple strikes, brockages, clipped planchets. There's a wealth of them. There's tons of them. Um, and the one thing that I have noticed that is happening a lot on, uh, on Canadian coins is there are coins that are being listed as errors, um, well, let me take that back, they're errors, they're being listed as varieties, okay, so then let's, we'll start with that, we're going to take this bad boy off, but we'll look at her again, um, or I should say bad girl, so this would be a normal 
run-of-the-mill 1978 one cent Canadian cent okay copper cent almost the same as the United States it's uh there's not a whole lot of variation it is a good year that's the year I was born just totally dated myself too um, however there are numerous nu numerous numerous years that are being listed as um, Queen's double face so I'm gonna show this to you guys okay this is the normal Canadian scent we're gonna look at Miss Lizzie's face here she's got a she's got a nice little knock on the tip of her nose there but otherwise for the main part you know it's a regular circulated penny it is what it is okay now we're gonna look at this 78 Canadian scent we're gonna move her up here and we're gonna put her down here and do you notice a difference in her face particularly along her forehead and her nose and so most of us who've been collecting for a little while would look at that and say that's the machine doubled it's nothing worth anything you know fairly normal might look at it once or twice just to be sure I if you can hear Wolverine I got my space heater blowing on me so if you do hear that I do apologize <laughs> but I'm trying to stay warm so this is a machine double now if you go on to coins in Canada's website and you look up Lincoln cents particularly in the 60s 70s um, and some of the 80s you will see listings of um, Queen's dub, uh, double Queen's face and this is almost to the T exactly what every single one of them are uh, they are not doubled by any stretch of the imagination not one bit these are machine doublings so these are errors and they do not command a premium but for some reason it has been touted as a double die and a lot of people especially newer collectors think that these are something worth keeping and they're not so that's something to look out for um, when you're looking through your uh, Canadian coins because it doesn't happen just on pennies it happens on other ones too um, so that's the first one would be the Queen's double face another one we have is I don't know if this one shows it so well oh we have ones this is some of the variations of names um, in Canada if you can see where did my pointer go right here right through here on the end here over here on the back of the C hopefully that's in focus for you guys it looks like it's die cracked or there's something weird going on um, and in Canada this is what is called a mortar set and basically all of that this is is a lamination error this is a 1944 victory nickel these are actually chrome they're steel with a chrome coating on them um, so you'll find these quite often they'll have this is a pretty decent one um, a lot of times you will find them and they will be rusty 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 uh, but nice looking and so if you see mortar set you can equate that with uh, lamination errors so you want to show that another one which I don't have anything Canadian and I didn't look through my American coins um, is ghosting you'll see that a lot on Canadian coins and ghosting is the exact same thing as indirect design transfer um, so with that all that is is when the coin was struck one side of the die hit harder than the other and it pushed the design through a little bit and so you'll see like an outline and they get uh, they get confused with die clashes I've done it numerous times um, 
heavy die transfer. Yeah, it's all it is is one of one of the dies just smashed harder than the other. And so that the design on that side pushed through to the other side a hair, but it's not a die clash. Uh, so something to uh, look out for that as well. So, oh, see, I told you I didn't have these all situated. <laughs> um, here's another one. The biggest thing that I see on coins in Canada is a lot of machine doubling. Um, I'll go down here a little bit. On the bottom of this five, this is not a pointed five, but on the bottom, especially the five, um, you'll see that listed as a double die. And when you're looking for double dies, remember split serifs. You always want to see split serifs. So we don't have split serifs here. What we have is machine doubling. If you look up here, I actually just noticed this. I didn't notice this the other day when I was looking at it. So, what would you say that is? I will answer questions in just a little bit, I promise. It's a stem. You are so right, Frank. Good job. A for Frank. He gets gold star. I don't know if that would be a bark. I don't know if that would be a double die or not. I'll have to look at that some more. It's not machine doubling. No, it's not. Um, so I will have to look at that one. But the five is machine doubled. So, yeah, well, and that's the thing. It's really, really thin right here. And I can see that. I can tell that right off the bat. This part all through here is really thin this looks normal so we're gonna put that one aside we'll look at it find out what that is I don't know all right now to get on some actual varieties so what I have we'll start with this one sure if you guys have collected you've heard about the pointed five and blunt five pointed seven blunt seven so this is a 1985 um, this is one of the bigger ones to find if you can find a pointed five. Blunt fives, there's a plethora of them. Um, and all you're looking for is right here on this five, it's going to be pointed towards the stem. It will not have a blunt edge. Um, so that is one of your really big, <laughs> one of your really big varieties. Yes, 1985. My parents were drinking illegally for years. All right, let's see. Other ones. Have you? I'm sure you guys have heard about the hanging varieties. And these are very prominent in the 50s and early 60s. So this is a 1963. And, oh, you know what? This is a die clash. This would be an error, not a variety. But if you look, you can see above the three, there's a die crack that goes from, or a clash that goes from the three to the maple leaf. And sometimes you'll see them, there'll be one, sometimes there'll be two, and there have been actually three of them found before. So that is always something to keep an eye, for, eye on on your 1950s and your early 60s. Um, is these hanging whatever the last number being of the date. So this is a 63, this is a hanging 3. We have, we're throwing coins around. This is a really messed up something or another. I don't even know why that one's in there because that's not the right coin. <laughs> Oh, there's Lizzie. Oh, that's upside down. We'll get it, guys. I promise. <laughs> this is a hanging two. Now, this one is not as noticeable, but it is there. You can see it. It's light, very light. And this one actually goes out to this part of the stem 
instead of up over here. But that is, it is there. It's light, but it's there. And it is toned. It's very pretty. Very, very pretty. All right. So here's one of my favorite things to look for is a shoulder fold and no shoulder fold. So 53, 54, and 55, you can find what's called a shoulder fold or non-shoulder fold variety. And we got to go to the obverse. All right. And you want to pay attention to DEI. The first thing you'll notice is that this eye has flares. They say flares. I say serifs. Um, and that the eye points right in between the two denticles. So if you take the center of the eye, it's right in between these two. That tells you it is a new shoulder fold, non-shoulder fold. Um, and I have another 53 shoulder fold to show you the difference. I don't have very good light. There we go. All right. So this one is a shoulder fold. Bottom is non-shoulder fold, top is shoulder fold. Here, there's no real flares on the eye and it points directly to a denticle. That is the easiest way for me to tell if it is shoulder fold or non-shoulder fold, okay? You find one of those proof-like mint state, it's a nice find for sure. Having a circulated one is nice to have because I have one, um, but it's not worth a whole chunk of change. Um, so here on the 53, there is another hanging three. And you can see that die clash from the maple leaf to the three. So I got this one actually out of a coin roll. I was coin rolling, uh, hunting pennies, and I got a non-shoulder fold hanging three. So that was pretty cool. Kind of fun. And I even wrote woohoo on my post-it note. <laughs> yes, I know. I need to get working on my blog some more. Um... I definitely, definitely do. For sure. Alright, so this one is a 1950, and this one has a lamination. Ooh. Lamination error. And a die crack. And it goes from the rim. I want to say, and it threw there. So there's another one. And basically, I've noticed with the uh, hi treasure trolls, um, with yeah, that didn't feel good at all. I'm sure he had a headache for days. With Canadian coins, when I stopped trying to figure out what they were doing and like the names that they were using and stuff like that and I started just looking at them like they were Lincoln cents, I started finding a lot more stuff. That's not going to work for everybody, especially if you just collect Canadians and you don't do U.S. coins, but I started with U.S. coins and moved on to here. Um, but I think that is probably the best advice that I could give somebody is to definitely take what you know about the U.S. coins and you can interject that into Canadian coins. The process of minting them is basically the same. Now back in the day before 1908, you know, not so much the same. Um, and then again, maybe it was. They used steam-powered press machines and all kinds of crazy stuff, but that is probably the best advice is when you're looking at pennies, look at the same stuff as, uh, look at them like they were Lincoln cents and, and see what you can find on them. You're going to find, you know, you want to look for double deers, double eyelids, um, die cracks, spike heads, all kinds of stuff, basically the same type of stuff. 
So this is a 52 Canadian, and I actually ran across this the other day, last Friday, um, while we were streaming on Ken's stream. Thank you, Brian. I didn't see what he said or anything, so. Um, and just kind of popping through this and looking at the letters and, you know, seeing what I could find. And then I looked at his ear and I went, well, that's not normal. And right here, it looks to me like we have a bit of a double ear. So, um, that's the first one that I've ever found. And I've never even looked at them. Um, so, you know. They're out there. There's stuff to find. And uh, just keep keep searching, keep searching, keep searching. Keep searching. All right. So let's put that aside. Now, we are going to look at some really cool stuff. Look to hang in threes. All right. So 1934. 1932 is the big one. All right, but I have a 34, and I also have a 23 to show you the difference. So this is a 1934. I'm going to move this back up. That's uh, too close. 1934 Canadian nickel. These are made out of nickel. They're not silver. These are the maple leaf designs. I like these designs. I think they're so cool. And we have what's called near rim and far rim. Okay. Now, this is, to me, this reminded me, I always put it with something else that I know that makes sense. So, to me, this reminded me of the 1982 Lincoln Sense. A lot of people have a hard time justifying what's a small date and a large date. And this is a lot... A lot more closer than uh, than what the 82s are, but um, it's something to look out for. So this would be considered a far rim. And if you look, there's actually some space where the S is from the rim of sense and the F is to the rim of five. Now, I'm going to take this 1923 just to show you because I don't have another 34. Same design. And the F is pretty much on that rim. And the S is darn close to that rim as well. So, that is one way to tell whether it is near or far. The other way to tell is where the four lies to the maple leaf. And that is where people have a hard time, harder time with it. Um, this is considered far. The near one would be much higher up, be like in the middle of that. So that's Canadian near and far rims. And those can get a little really confusing. Um, did that one, we did that one, I got so many here, and I thought I had them all situated, hanging to you, nope, oh, we had to go back to pennies for a second, <laughs> well, Frank, if you can tell me what that date in Japanese would be, you'll get another gold star. All right, so a 1983 near bead and far bead, and there are other varieties of this. Um, and again, this just kind of, they kind of remind me of the 82. I always put it with something that I know fairly well. You know what? I think those ones are the same. <laughs> but... Your beads on the reverse, not the obverse. Maybe it was the obverse. 
It was the obverse. You can tell there's a difference in how those, where the beads. So, near beads are going to be really close to the rim far. Beads are going to be further out. It's always easiest if you have another coin of the same, uh, same year to justify which ones are which. Um, and the near and far beads on this 83 cent is for the obverse. So that's something to always pay attention to, whether you're looking at obverse or reverse. Um, all right, so 1990 Canadian nickel. There is a large and small bead as well, and I don't have anything of that nature. So, I would totally show you if I did, but I don't. Alright, here, this is a proof-like. This came out of an uncirculated set. Mr. Beaver himself. So, there are a bunch of different varieties on the beaver nickels. Different years, 1990, there was a big one called a bear belly. And right here, a lot of this is missing, if not all of it. Um, and so that would be called a bear belly. That is one variety. Um, there is also extra water lines where the water line, the top water line, um, will either be thickened or will have split and there will be, it's almost like a die crack, but they call it an extra water line. Um, there's another one called a bug's tail. This one is not, I don't believe, kind of looks like he's got one there, but a little die chip at the end of the beaver tail and they call it a bug's tail. Um, some things to keep an eye out for, um, and other things. Things obviously you're going to want to look for double dies and things of that nature. Um, but on the beaver's paws, a lot of times this front paw here looks like he's missing a toe. I have other ones where he has a toe and then there's a die chip. So it looks like he's actually got something on his paw and he's eating off of his paw. The first finger of this paw right up here. A lot of times you'll see it and it's split. And then you'll also find extra paws, extra toes, I should say, not paws. Extra toes on the rear foot there. Um, but these are absolutely beautiful. He's got some things going on with them. I haven't, you know, there's some machining and whatnot. Um, but, yeah, they're nice. Nice, nice, nice. And then Miss Lizzie. You know, I, was, I just started, like I said, checking them like they were Lincolns and looking at her neck, looking at her ears, looking at her eyes. Um, you know, things where that's more, uh, I don't know what you want to say, pushed in. So things are more liable to break. Um, and mess up. And so you will find a lot of machine doubling along her neck, along the reverse of her bust, um, even along the top of her head, but they're just machine doubles. So if you see, you know, double bust, double queen's face, you look at it closely. Let's see, that was just a regular one. And then I wanted to show you guys My cool, awesome finds. So, I have in my collection two 50 cent pieces. That's it. Two 50 cent pieces. And these are absolutely, oh, they're stunning. They are just stunning. No, that's the older ones, Alden, where her skin starts hanging. 
but they just have such a beautiful design. I absolutely love them. I love the crest and everything. Lion and the horsey. I don't know the proper terminology, so they will be lion and horsey. Alright, so this one here is a 1969. This is not silver. This is nickel. And this was the one that I had up in the beginning. She looks like she's got a bit of a die crack or something on the top there, but... Do you see anything with her eye? Maybe if we turn it like that. No, those are the only two I own. <laughs> I'm really, like, I've been so ducking my uh, large sense that I don't have as much as I would like to have. So, she has... Right there. You see these? She's got a double eyelid. Right there. See those marks right there? It's a double eyelid. First ones I have ever found. Yep. Super bonus. So, keep an eye on all of your Canadians. These are just 250 cent pieces. Now this, I have to, is a 1967 and it is in the plastic so you can see those marks. This is a howler. So the reverse has the wolf on it. This one is silver. And this one came from Miss Paula. Absolutely love this thing. Can never go wrong with a wolf on a coin. And it looks like we have something of the same situation going on here. So... Like I said, I'm going to say it again. Check your coins. Check your Canadians. Just because one website says this thing and another says that, and you know it's not an error, nothing is listed for this particular error or variety, keep checking them. Always check them. Always, always. I would have never thought to even look for them, and I just decided to start looking at them like they were pennies and that's what I found when I started doing that so now I have a whole ton more to go through um so when it comes to coinsincanada.com and I've said this before I'm gonna say it again I'm gonna reiterate it I have messaged people and talked to people and I've gone on coin community forums on the Canadian sites and said what is going on why is this like this because so many people are posting stuff and it's not, it's nothing worth posting. It's regular chump change. Just, you know, if you want to keep it, keep it. But otherwise, you know, give it to somebody else. I was going to say send it back to the bank. Canadians don't take money. They don't take pennies anymore. Um, but the other stuff they do. So just do your due diligence. You know, read up errors-ref.com is a great, probably the best website for learning your errors, varieties, what is worth something, what isn't worth anything. Um, and then another option to use for some of your larger, um, larger known varieties in any Canadian coinage would be Saskatoon CA, um, SaskatoonCoinClub.ca. And I'll I have every both of them linked in my description, um, but definitely check it out. If you go to their regular web page, 
Um, there is a plethora of articles and all kinds of stuff. You can read about paper money and just everything. And then if you go click on the articles tab, they have listings for um, varieties and stuff like that. But they do list the major varieties. So stuff you're going to find, you know, in your Charlton's and in your Haxby books and things like that. Um, but it is nice and they have some really great pictures so it's easier to justify what's what. Because some of them are really hard to figure out what is what. Um, so, on that note, what questions do you want to ask me? I know Jeff Dunn was asking what year they flipped from copper pennies to zinc. And off the top of my head, I don't know. I am, like, so tired. Let's see. 65 copper. Copper, copper, copper. Copper plated zinc. 1997. Mm-hmm. Yep. In 97 is when they changed to zinc. Grading companies in Canada, ICCS and then CCCS. ICCS is going to be your PCGS of Canada. CCCS is going to be more of your lower end NGC slash annex, if that makes sense. Canadian bacon is not really bacon, okay? It's, it's like ham. How long did I work on my makeup today? Ten minutes, maybe. Yeah, ten minutes. <laughs> it is. It's rubbery ham. I'm not a fan of Canadian bacon. Now, I have had brashers, real brashers, from Scotland. And that's good. That's really good. Um, I've had bacon from over there and it's not the same. I don't know why we call it bacon, but it is bacon and it is God's gift to meat eaters is what it is. There is no joke. Oh, there's one more I wanted to show you guys. Now, I'm going to start doing fish scales as my next. And, um, I got to, in my big Christmas package after my, uh, my surgery, and this was one of them, it's a 1907, and this is the reverse, and it's got the crown up there, and now this crown, crowns, there's something to keep an eye out for when you're doing older coins like this, too, because some of the crowns have the Maltese cross, which is like this, you know, kind of, they kind of fl have flared ends like that, um, and then other ones have these, it's a bow, it's supposed to have a cross behind them, but, and this one is considered a narrow date, 1907. Not worth a penny. Oh, no, they're worth more than a penny. Um, there's a narrow date and a wide date. And then there is also the narrow date low 7. So if you ever start these, the narrow date low 7 on the Canadian 5 cent is uh, definitely the one you want. Obviously, that 7 is not low 1 bit, but it is narrow. That 7 is close to the 0 um, it's actually just a little bit closer than the rest of the numbers are in spacing wise. And so your wide seven will be further out. Um, definitely one. The five cent, the fish scales went to, um, what they do? 19, they went to 1921. 1922 is when they went to the nickel. So, and then some of them flip like ours on a vertical axis and some of them flip on a horizontal axis. So you got to know which ones are those two. Hey, Uper Digger, how you doing, neighbor? 
roly-poly fish scales. I just think they are so cool. They're so freaking tiny and they're thin. I mean, they're ridiculously thin. Oop. If that gives you an idea of how thin they are. So, they are, uh, they're cool. They're really thin. I need to find a good book or something to put these in. Hey, Rivendell. I have never seen a trime, nor have I ever held the trime, so I wouldn't know, but I'll take your word on it. Oh, how large are they? They are smaller than a dime, an American dime. They're very small. So, I have, oh, my camera kept moving, didn't it? Oh, now it moved the wrong way. See all these? So all of those things up there, I have to do, well, I don't have to. I'm going to do a giveaway, but I'm only going to tell you part of the giveaway. Um, so part of the giveaway is going to be this uh, lovely coin scope. I have an extra microscope. It did not work with my computer very well, and it's probably just my, it's not the scope, it's my computer. Um, but I have a, there went the CD. It's in a package, though. So it's got Stan, it's got all the stuff that comes with it. This thing is really neat. It's uh, like an extra battery USB box thing. So you can like hook it up to your cell phone and whatnot. Like this thing's got all kinds of stuff with it. So that's part of the giveaway. The other part is I will include a nice little plethora of Canadian coins. I just don't know what yet. Um, and uh, yeah. It'll just be a surprise. I have to go through my coins. I still have half my coins packed up, which is why I don't know what you're getting. But you'll get some Canadians. And we'll probably do, you know, at least one except for the 50 centers. <laughs> at least one nickel, one dime, and one quarter. Maybe a, maybe a loony. I don't have any. Too, well, my toonies are all in sets. They're not broken out so and four pounds of Canadian bacon no I'm not sending four pounds of Canadian bacon although it would be frozen good here it would probably last but no <laughs> so the first person when I say go in the chat and you can only guess once To answer that gets the scope and some Canadian coinage. As soon as I say go, and you can only guess once. So, are we ready? Go ahead and go. I tried to hit enter. It didn't work. And we have a winner. It's fine, Lincoln. I, bo I boo-booed it up. That was my fault. So... Are we done guessing now? Oh, Weasel, I'm sorry. Maybe I should have read it out. 
It's okay. I I meant to hit. Well, I t I hit enter and it didn't go. And people started. They probably heard it and started guessing. So it's perfectly fine. So yes, in 1933, prohibition was appealed after what 13 long ass years. Well, that's a good thing. Einstein gave up his citizenship to Germany and immigrated over to the United States. Construction began January 5th on the Golden Gate Bridge, and FDR had his first fireside chat. Some other interesting knowledge that I learned on looking this stuff up today was that Adolf Hitler gave the go on the something car. Um, I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it ended up being the VW. Ended up being Volkswagen in 1933. But the, night, but the Volkswagen wasn't actually made until 38. Canada does make whiskey. Not a fan. They need to stick to the beer. For reals. So, lucky coin, Hunter. You are the winner. I'm going to put my email in the chat. Email me your mailing address. I can't type. I can't do nothing today. And uh, I will get that out to you on Friday. There you guys go. I could too, Weasel. I could too. Very good, Hoosier. So, did you guys want a hint or something? Does anybody want a hint? Anyone? Do you need a hint? Do you got it? Did you figure it out? <laughs> Sorry, Lincoln. <laughs> well, the answer to that was your hint. 1933. Tape on the bottom. Oh, that's good Kool-Aid. I always tell people don't drink the Kool-Aid, but sometimes you just got to. <laughs> so. Yes, Kool-Aid. All right, so we have Jeff Schumacher coming up. Um, in about 10 minutes, give you guys a break so you, everybody can go potty and grab a beer or a snack or Kool-Aid, you know, smoke a cigarette, whatever you got to do, get her done. Um, and then, uh, don't forget tomorrow, starting at noon with oldies and goodies, Uncle Al. So... Thank you guys very, very much. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, and be good. I'll see you guys around. Well, I'll see you guys on the next one. Do, do, do. We got to hit the button, don't we?